Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can build your own power source section for your Boeing 737 overhead panel. To build the panel you will need one big on-off switch, five momentary off momentary switches, an eight position rotary switch, switch caps, a switch cover and 15mm hex standoffs. For the gauge you will need a servo motor, parts for covering the gauge, a 4mm acrylic rod, two small acrylic rings and gears, a needle, four 30mm female and male hex standoffs, the bottom, middle and upper plate, several blue and orange annunciators, two additional acrylic plates and 8mm acrylic shafts, the bottom, middle and upper panel. After I've seen the backlighting of my fuel panel, I've made some changes to the middle plate of this panel here. You can see when I show this here in my fuel panel, I've left a big area unpainted to let the light come through and to light up the upper panel. But when I was looking to the back lighting, then I realized that too much light came through and I thought that the white paint of this panel here would prevent enough light from shining through, but it isn't. And so I came out with a big white glowing panel and this would have looked good compared to all the other panels. And now I had the option to bring more paint to this area, but I didn't want to disassemble this panel because I would have to unmount these annunciators here or mask them out, including all the switches. And so I decided to paint the backside of this panel black and engraved the outlines of these lines here again to the back side of the panel. And so only these black areas here are lighted up. At this panel here I had the chance of doing it right from the beginning and I painted also this area here which I left unpainted before and then I engraved the outlines of these areas here into this new paint. And I think then when I will lay them on top of each other, on the light will only come through these areas here. By the way, you can see there is a difference between these two colors here. Both of these colors have the same raw code, but they look different. This color came from my airbrush pistol and this is the normal acrylic lacquer which I use most of the times. So be careful when you mix up different color manufacturers. Only because the raw coat is the same, it doesn't mean that the color looks the same.
all components are connected via a shared ground cable. The switch shafts are heated up to prevent the hot glue from hardening too fast. Everything is assembled now and connected to the Arduino and I want to show you just a short overview of how I have connected this thing again to my Arduino. A short announcement to the new visitors of my channel. I won't go into details of the programming and connection here in this video. I have done this in several videos before and if you want to know exactly how to program MobiFlight and Prosim, then go to my dedicated videos. There you will find all the answers you need in detail. Here is my connection sheet and the interesting lines are here from number D27 down to um, D50. Here you can see all the buttons that are connected to these pins of the Arduino and the LEDs to these other pins here the colors and the resistors are written down and also the used offsets here. I can use a 25 pin DSUP connector to connect the whole panel uh, to my Arduino with a shared ground connection uh, so the to pin 25. You can find this connection sheet here in my download section for free so you can um, study it at home. In MobiFlight I have declared the new devices which you can find under extra settings and MobiFlight modules. Here I have connected my Arduino number D and there we find from number D27 the buttons, then all the LEDs and the motor. Everything connected to its pin on the Arduino. I have declared the outputs here, the LEDs and the motor, and also the inputs are all declared down here. In Prosim, you will find all the corresponding values in the combined config tab, and here in the electric category, and first under switches, you will find all the switches you need, 
for example, the APU generator or other switches. There are many more that um, belong to the electric panel, for example, but you can pick out the switches you need for this power source panel here. I have also written down the uh, ProSim names in my connection sheet. Also, you will find um, values in the indicator tab. Here you can see all the variables to control the LEDs. And the motor can be found in the gauge category. And there is only this one motor here for the APU. I want to show you again how to set up a gauge in ProSim. I have shown this in my fuel gauge video, but I think for new visitors this can be interesting too. I show you right above me here the outputs from FSU IPC in MobiFlight and over this in the top corner you can see in the settings for the gauge. And now we have to define where these three values are on the gauge. So when the needle is reaching these values here. And I can slide this with my mouse and you can already see there is something moving on the um, gauge and the values in MobiFlight are changing. Now you can use your mouse and the arrow keys to reach this position here. So first of all, I have to reach the zero position. Yeah, I think this value here of 255 should be fine. And now to 1000. Have to go more to the left here. Now I have to look in detail. So I think this should be fine. And 1100 I will set to the zero output here. This looks fine. And this is all we have to do here for setting up a gauge. Now we can finally make the tests. I have running MobiFlight. I have running prepared in the background. And here above me you can see a small section of the overhead from pros and panels to control all the outputs. I think you have seen this in my video. I have left the wiper switch uh, unconnected. I can use it here, um, but there is any function behind this. And until I will bring water and rain into my cockpit, I won't need it. But if I will need it for which reason ever, I can connect it and connect it after that to the Arduino. But now it will be just a dummy switch. But the other switches are working and you can already see these six LEDs should light up here and those are the LEDs here on my real panel. So this is working. The first thing I want to test is uh, this ground power available LED here. I can test this by just clicking on it. So will it work? I'm clicking here and the LED is lighting up. So it is working. But there is another method of testing this. And this is the instruct station of ProSim. And you can go to this instruct station by opening your browser and going to a local host on the 8080 port. If your ProSim instance is installed on your um, PC you are sitting on. So and here under service you can switch on the ground power and this is what I will do now in the background. So I'm going back here to show you the panel and now when I click on ground power the light is going on here on my panel. And so I can go on and make further tests here. And I will test now the ground power switch. I go to on. Yes, the switch 
is going into the right position and all the other LEDs are reacting correct. And if I switch it to off, the switch is reacting correct and also all the LEDs here are lighted up. So let's make another test and look at this gauge here. And to see it working, we will start the APU. I'm switching on the APU start switch. You can't see it, it is right underneath this panel. And now after a while, I can see the needle moving right at the needle here on the prosim panel is moving and now it should go down a little bit there it goes so this gauge is working correctly now the apu has reached the state that we can use the power from it and you can see the apu led here is lighting up and we will activate the power from the apu so this switch is working, this one is working, all the LEDs are working correctly, everything is fine. So our engines are running in the background, we won't use the APU anymore and we switch over to the generators. Switch is working, switch is working, let's test the APU off direction here, it is working, everything is working fine and a last test here the off position of these generator switches right it is working everything is working okay let's do a little test here of these lights here by just clicking them working working fine everything is working we have a fully functional power source panel so the whole panel is working and I have forgotten one test and this is the test of this uh, bus transfer switch here but believe me I have tested this after I recorded the video and it is working. So I haven't demonstrated every construction step in detail because you have seen these steps in my previous videos. So for all the new visitors of you, if you want to know how to mold and cast those buttons, how to make switch caps, annunciators here, or especially making gauges or cutting and engraving panels. There are dedicated videos for these topics. Just watch my previous videos and you will find everything you will need to build your own panel in detail. So if you want to build your own panel at home, you will find the plans for cutting out and building this panel here in the member section of my website. And if you don't want to miss the upcoming episodes here, then just subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we will see us soon back on the Flight Deck.